Wow! Look at this rainbow of colors, Gay Hubbers. Aren't the flowers pretty? There are red roses, pink, yellow, orange, peach, lavender, and even blue flowers. I like gardens, but what I like the most is one with lots and lots of colors instead of a monochromatic garden dominated by one or two colors only. That's why for me, this flower garden is the best. to enjoy a wide variety of flowers because of genetic diversity in plants around us. You see, as two cells are being fused during cross-pollination, the end product will be different from the parent because the new offspring will have half the chromosomes from one species and half the chromosomes from another. This amazing process is called meiosis. How does meiosis apply to us humans? Let's listen to Ms. Arlen Gatpo, Master Teacher in Biology at Ramon Magsaysay High School and 2010 Outstanding Science Teacher Awardee as she teaches her curious students all they need to know about meiosis. Paolo? Which side of your family do you look more like? Your mother's or your father's? People say I look like my father. What about you? Well, whenever you have family get-togethers, people always say I look like my mom. Well, if that's the case, I look like both of them. Mom, why is it that we look very much like our parents? Some people grow up to look very much like their father and mother. Some children's look and behavior vary from their siblings. This is because the chromosomes behave in different ways during cell division and fertilization. In humans, each body or somatic cell contains two sets of chromosomes, with 23 chromosomes in each set. Each of the 23 pairs is called homologous pair. One comes from each parent cell. A cell contains two complete sets of homologous pairs of chromosome. It is called a diploid cell. The number of chromosome in a diploid is called diploid number, represented by 2n. Each organism has a constant diploid number of chromosomes in their body cells. Ma'am, how many chromosomes are found in human sex cells? The human sex cells, which are the egg cells and the sperm cells, contain only half of the number of chromosomes found in the body cells. A cell containing a single set of chromosome is called a haploid cell. Human gametes have a haploid number of chromosome or 23 chromosomes. Thus, in sexual reproduction, a haploid sperm cell from the father fuses with a haploid egg from the mother. This process is called fertilization. When an egg and sperm unite in a fertilization, a diploid zygote forms. The zygote has one set of chromosomes from the male parent and another set from the female parent. In humans, both father and mother contribute 23 chromosomes each. Thus, zygote has 46 chromosomes. The zygote divides many times. This produces a new diploid multicellular organism. How do sex cells form in the first place? Gametogenesis is the process by which reproductive cells like sperm and egg cells are produced. There are two types of gametogenesis, spermatogenesis or sperm formation and oogenesis or ovum or egg cell formation. Ma'am, yes. we've learned in our study of the reproductive system that sperm cells are produced 
in the testes of male animals. But how many of these cells are produced by meiosis? Meiosis produces four cells which are very small but of similar size. These cells become spermatozoa or sperm cells. The nucleus is found in the head of the sperm. Mitochondria are found at the midpiece that connects the head to the tail. These mitochondria provide the energy for the movement of sperm's tail. In females, egg cells are produced in the ovary. When a cell in the ovary undergoes meiosis, new cells which differ in size are produced. Ma'am, we learned that mitosis ensures that all somatic cells receive exact copies of all the zygote's 46 chromosomes. Mm -hmm. Is it the same with gametes? Gametes cannot undergo mitosis since it would double the number of their chromosomes. Haploid gametes are produced by a special type of cell division called meiosis, which occurs only in the reproductive cells. Ma'am, but meiosis is also a type of cell division, like mitosis, right? That's right. Meiosis is similar to mitosis in so many ways, and both occur in eukaryotic cells, and they have similar phases of cell division. But the two processes differ in the following ways. One, meiosis results in the daughter cells having half the number of chromosomes, haploid number, of the parent cell. Two, the resulting daughter cells in meiosis are not all alike. They do not have the exact copies of the chromosomes. Three, in mitosis, parent cell produces two daughter cells, while in meiosis, a parent cell divides twice producing four daughter cells. Four, mitosis occurs in all body cells while meiosis occurs only in reproductive cells of ovaries and testes. Ma'am, they differ in a lot of ways, but like mitosis, Meiosis is a continuous process, right? That's right, Dalsy. Meiosis involves two successive nuclear division, namely meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Each nuclear division has these stages, the prophase, the metaphase, the anaphase, and the telophase. It has the same phases as mitosis. Good observation, Raja. Meiosis 1 begins after the G2 phase in the cell cycle and after the DNA replication, in which each chromosome was replicated to form sister chromatids, joined at their centromeres. Prophase 1 is the longest and the most complex phase of meiosis, which makes up 90% of the entire process. Early in this phase, the chromosome becomes thick and visible. Homologous pairs of chromosomes come together, then in a process called synapsis, the two sister chromatids of each pair up with the chromatids of its homolog and form a structure called tetrads. Each tetrad has four chromatids and during synapsis, chromatids of homologous chromosome exchange segments. This process is called crossing over. Crossing over results in exchange genes between pairs of homologous chromosome. It is the process that only occurs during prophase 1. After crossing over has occurred, the gene combination of each chromosome in homologous pair is no longer the same combination it had before meiosis. Ma'am, what happens to the cell's nucleoli and nuclear membrane? As prophase 1 proceeds, nucleoli and nuclear membrane disappears. The centrioles, which have duplicated prior to prophase 1, start moving away from each other and begin forming spindle fibers between them. During metaphase 1, the homologous chromosome aligned at the middle of the cell, between the two poles, where the centrioles are located. For each pair, spindle microtubules from one pole attach to one of the homologous chromosomes and the microtubules from the opposite pole attached to the other chromosome. 
Ma'am, yes. of the four phases of mitosis, anaphase is the shortest. Is it the same for anaphase 1 in meiosis? Yes, it is. Anaphase 1 is marked by the movement of chromosome of each homologous pair towards the opposite poles of the cell. Unlike in mitosis, each individual chromosome consists of two sister chromatids. During telophase 1 and cytokinesis, the chromosomes are on each side of the pole. Each chromosome still consists of two sister chromatids. In some cells, the chromosome uncoil, the nucleoli and the nuclear membrane reappear, and then a pause occurs before meiosis II begins. In other types of cells, the daughter cells produced in the first meiotic division immediately proceed to the second meiotic division. In either case, cytokinesis occurs during telophase 1 and the chromosome do not replicate before the second meiotic division begins. Ma'am, if after meiosis 1, two cells are produced, yeah. one big and one small, What's produced after meiosis 2? Meiosis 2 produces two cells, one big and one small, out of the first big cell. Meiosis 2 is essentially the same as mitosis. It also consists of prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and cytokinesis. The only difference is that meiosis 2 starts with haploid cells. At the end of this process, four new daughter cells are produced each with a haploid number of chromosomes. The small cell produced for meiosis 1 may or may not divide. If it does, two small cells are produced. The big cell becomes the egg cell and the small cells disintegrate. The egg cell contains a lot of stored food which is used by the growing embryo at the start of its development. In fertilization, the tiny sperm cell only contributes its genetic material found in the head. Ma'am, what happens when chromosomes in a pair fail to separate from one another during meiosis 1? In that case, the resulting egg cell acquires a member of each pair of chromosomes. Meiosis may not proceed normally. Sometimes, accidents happen. This accident may affect the functioning of the spindle fiber or the movement of one of the chromosomes. In humans, some accidents have been known to cause abnormal condition, like the Down syndrome. This involves an excess chromosome in chromosome pair 21. If the egg is fertilized by a normal sperm, the individual produced is afflicted with retarded condition. In Turner syndrome, girls are born with only one X chromosome instead of two, or they are missing part of one X chromosome. Turner syndrome prevents the ovaries from developing properly, which affects a girl's sexual development and the ability to have children. Klinefelter syndrome, on the other hand, results in sexual underdevelopment and excessive tallness in males. Several drugs may cause breaks or other abnormalities in the chromosomes such as chlorpromazine, a popular tranquilizer, dipenhydramine, an antihistamine, and LSD, a hallucinogen. We know that meiosis plays an important role in shaping how we look and act and even when we get sick. Now scientists are trying to use that knowledge in preventing and curing health problems. And for many people who have abnormal conditions, further study on mitosis and meiosis holds the hope that they or their children can live better, healthier lives. Yes, aside from the important application of mitosis and meiosis you mentioned, application of cell division can also be found in plant research. Now. Bigger and better varieties of plants are produced by modifying their chromosomes. Polyploid plants, represented by the symbol 2N of chromosomes, have more than the normal diploid number. These plants may have 3N, 4N, 5N, and 6N number of chromosomes. For example, seedless calamansi has 3N chromosomes. Large and beautiful varieties of roses can have as many as 8N chromosomes. Chemicals are usually used to create polyploids.
have learned that kids with special needs, such as Down syndrome, got their genetic disorder because there is a problem with their chromosome. Because they look different, some people tease or bully kids who have special needs. But these kids have feelings just like anybody else. They want to be accepted and have friends. Instead of teasing them, you should offer a helping hand and a friendly word of encouragement. At first, you may feel a little intimidated at the thought of being friendly with a child with special needs. But knowing what to expect gives you the confidence to approach and be friendly with them. Learning and knowing not only help us gain knowledge, they help us gain friends too. See you next time, K-Hubbers! Bye!